Hi folks, how you doing? We are here live on Joe with Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby. Unfortunately, Baz couldn't be here because he's bronzing his manscaped beard in Australia, but we have got a slightly paler, but just as handsome version of Baz in the form of Paddy. It's such a nice thing for you to say, Trim. Yeah, it's nearly a compliment. Nearly, it's, it's so close. Um, we're here in the home of Guinness, the centre of Dublin, the Open Gate Brewery, and we're here because we've got an amazing show. We certainly do. We've got Conrad Smith, James Lowe, and a yep. few Irish internationals. Mm -hmm. Paddy, b before we go on, tell me, have you, uh, have you ever beaten the All Blacks? Yeah, do you think about that? No, I don't, I don't think I have, actually. Have I've, you? I've beaten them, yeah. You've beaten the All Blacks? You should probably bring that up to Let's me, bring actually. it up. Let's, Let's go and tell them about it. Let's do the show. Hello and you're very welcome to Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby live at the Guinness Open Gate Brewery! So Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby has been a rip-roaring success. They said, you know what, you created history two years ago when you beat the All Blacks. Let's create more history and have our first live show. So it's great you can all be here to join us. I know we're surrounded by friends, but um, this is not only my first live show, but this is my first show as a presenter. How do you think it's gone so far? Uh, 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 what does everybody think, Andrew Trimble? So far, so far. I, uh, does anybody remember when Andrew used to be a rugby player before he became a uh, show? How is showbiz going? For well, to be fair, it? it was six months ago. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it wasn't that long ago. You're one of us now. You're you're on the uh, the showbiz side of the. Fence. I'm not. I'm not a media parasite, Paddy. No, <laughs> I'm still. I'm still one of the boys. I'm still one of the rugby lads. But I'm surrounded by friends tonight because everybody here has subscribed. Am I right? O'Driscoll subscribed, Tana Umanga subscribed, and now everybody here subscribed, so I'm surrounded by friends, so I feel extremely comfortable. No, you should. I mean, they're all, you can see, you can just by looking into the whites of their eyes, they're all red hot fans of what Apple, and they would know in fairness, are <laughs> saying is Ireland's number one sports and recreation show, all right? Now, I know some of them are here for sport, but just look at them. There's so many of them that just love recreation. <laughs> they, they live, this man here holding his pint of Guinness, he's like, I love recreation. <laughs> I live to recreate. That's a, he's, a, he's a recreator, you can tell straight uh, away. Yeah, if you're standing here tonight and you're not into sport, then you are a recreationalist. <laughs> so enjoy that tag, whatever that means. Uh, no, it's fair to say, um, Trimby, these are Baz and Andrew people. Um, they, they, they know you, they love you, they're sympathetic to your, your affliction, you know? What, what affliction? What do you mean? I'm a, I'm a Protestant, but I mean like... That's... No, 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 no. No, no. Um, There's lots of Protestants about, you know. Of course, of course. I'm talking about your comically long arms. Uh-huh, yeah. This is, um, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed doing this production, but talking about my long arms has been my least favorite part of the show. It's become a regular feature, and, and it's, it's... This is, is this part of the showbiz now? Is this you pretending you don't like talking about your really long arms? <laughs> yeah. Any, any press is good press. Go on, talk along. Talk along. No, no, you've been saying, you've been claiming that, you've been saying that it's been overhyped, because I know Baz, who can't be here today, and we are thinking of you, Baz, wherever you might be. Yeah, there was a, there was one person that said, oh, there. <laughs> but can we get a bit of an offer, for Baz, who can't be here today, and... Oh. That's nice, that's nice. Uh, no, Baz has been hyping it up. Trimby has been playing it down, and to be fair, I was actually coming around to it until the other day I was in the office, and a few people are saying, Trimby's a bit of a show pony, he never does any work, and I said, I better take a picture just to show that you do put in a good shift in mm -hmm. fairness, mm -hmm. all right? And uh, I just took a picture, and it wasn't I looked at it afterwards that I, something caught me. I just want to have a quick look at this picture here. This is Trimby in the office, all right? Can you just, <laughs> could you just look at those sleeves, those cuffs for a moment? Can we zoom in, can we zoom in on those cuffs? <laughs> like, come on, that's not, that's not normal. That's fake news. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's I don't know, I don't know how you did that, but it's very impressive to be fair. That's, that's, uh, that's not, that is not a normal shirt for any human being. If, if, to be fair, those sleeves were too long for me. They were, were they? Okay, yeah, they were, yeah. taken in. All right, um, before we get into the show, uh, we've got a brilliant prize up for grabs. I think it's probably a lot of the reason a lot of the rec recreationalists are here tonight. <laughs> um, because with thanks to Guinness, we have got... Two tickets. These are money can't buy. Well, 
lots of money probably yeah. go buy them but you will get them for free two tickets to see Ireland versus New Zealand this weekend yeah, that's so, good, that's what's open for. Uh, yes, absolutely, you got the reaction you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So if you are in with any chance of winning those tickets, you got to tweet or Instagram uh, live here tonight, and you have to hashtag Answer Ireland's Call, and mm -hmm. that'll give you a chance to go into the mix to win tickets, and we'll play off to see who wins later on, and we'll go into a little bit more detail of what we mean by playing off. Yeah, yeah there'll be a little bit of a competition. Tuned. Uh, so yes, hashtag Answer Ireland's Call and get it on Twitter or Instagram. Um, before we get into the body of the show, a couple of shout outs to some special guests. Uh, we got, they're not even on the show, but this is the level of Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby, where the great, the good, the famous, and the sporting achievers turn up. A uh, big shout out to Justin Marshall and Jeff Wilson, who are in the crowd here tonight. Give them a big cheer. Hey guys. Uh, what's Jeff, the back? Jeff, sorry. Jeff. Paddy didn't know who you were, but I, I, I told him that you were class in Starsky and Hutch. I thought you were, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, will we get our first guest out? Yeah! All right, one's a Kiwi legend, has played 94 times for the All Blacks. One's an Irish legend, has played on 72 occasions for his country. Would you please give a very warm Baz and Andrew's House of Welcome, House of Rugby Welcome. What's House of it's Welcome? Fine, it's, it's, fine, new show. it's fine. Conrad Smith and David Wallace! <laughs> On. Conrad, <laughs> Wally. What's going on, Wally? Great. Oh, it's fresh. Yeah, Welcome to the show, boys. How are you all feeling? Good. I feel like uh, like I'm selling insurance, I think. <laughs> <laughs> make a few calls. Call center. Nice and <laughs> done. Yeah, uh, you can do what you want, though. You can do what you want, Wally. You're oh, thanks, buddy. Tonight. Cheers, yeah, cheers. Absolutely. Check Tell me this. Dude, you see, he do doesn't even have to get out of the chair. Look at that, long arms. <laughs> 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 what you mean of that shirt, Wally, in fairness? It's something else, wasn't it? Do we? Uh, Trimby shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he, we had to put up with that a lot, actually, in Ireland. Yeah, yeah. But you always knew Trimby never lost clothes because he, you know, they were Trimby's clothes. Those long <laughs> arms. He, yeah. I never had to put AT on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everybody knew yeah. those were my clothes. So, fellas, was there, Conrad, Wally, was there much, was there much of an overlap? How many times did you play against each other? Oh, statistician? I don't know. Yeah, I'd say uh, probably about four, maybe. That's I'm correct. Gonna, I'm going to go, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four. Got, got surprises. Yeah, yeah, we got him here four times <laughs> okay, on the ball, okay. Wally. Yeah. How many wins, Wally? <laughs> I, I can't remember, actually. I can't remember. Uh, what's the heaviest defeat then, shall we say? Oh, that was in New Zealand. Um, we, I think we got a, had we a yellow card, we had a red card. Um, I think we had somebody running around with a, a broken arm as well at the same time. Yeah, we had excuses, didn't we? We had we a had lot of it. We're very good at that, actually. It was always politics. <laughs> yeah. It was always things that just didn't go our was, way. Was it, six, it was 60 points on us anyway, I think. Yeah. Where was that yeah. one? New Plymouth? It was, uh, yeah, that's the one, yeah. yeah, yeah it was right. where I was born, so that was a special game. Yeah, so you're up for it. You're up for it. Yeah. So it might, um, might, might not have been many others. It was a small <laughs> yeah. town and uh, wet weather from memory. It was which? Wet weather. Oh yeah, line. yeah, yeah. It was pretty, pretty bad. A bit like, bit like Ireland now. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, uh, we, we dug in the archives, mm. and we found we were, we were struggling to find a picture of the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Proof that you played in the same. We field. tried to avoid each other. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. But we did find one. We did find one. Oh, okay. Right, it's the two boys. <laughs> ah, <beautiful. laughs> We're obviously just after scoring, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah can, so yeah. there you can see you're obviously, you know, you're, you're making memories there. <laughs> so I'm Turn sure you've got, you've got a lot to catch just up recreate on. Recreate it. There we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you photobombed him, Wally. <laughs> Worst photobomb ever, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's going through your mind there, Wally? Is he kind of Justin's in the foreground and you're just wandering away? Do you remember that, Do you remember that moment? I can't remember two minutes ago. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, I'm trying to work out the, the, where that game was. That, that wasn't you. That was the 2010 yeah, that, game, apparently. There you go. That was the one I'm you won, Conrad. Special memory. You need some guys that you'd know. There's some guys that are mate like Ma Nonu. If he was here, he would he'd be able to look at that photo and and know the exact game, who played, everything like that. I'm, I'm, I yeah, don't have the. We were talking about it earlier, actually. The only one that kind of really stands out is the the 2001 game for me. In, of uh, course. Yeah, it was one of we the so, first ones. Ireland were so far ahead, and then it was yeah, turned on its Yeah, it was Richie McCaw. I actually made Richie McCaw that day. Yeah. He got man of the match. I was marking him, so <laughs> <laughs> he, owes, he owes a lot to me. 21-7 yeah. up, and then they, they they turned it around. That's just something the All Blacks like they did it against England at the weekend. I mean, I suppose it's something that 
you're never they're never beaten like well, they just have that they aura. always have the ability to score tries I mean that's they're the best team in the world at doing that and, and uh, I think even when the chips are down you know it's, it's like you know you're the older brother and you kind of you, you just think oh look I'm playing against your, your, your kid brother and I think oh you know I'm, I'm losing but you know I know I can score another couple of tries or whatever it is and they have that that kind of ability and um, they have a skill set like like no one else and, and they have a, a an approach to the game that I don't think many teams have but uh, yeah so so they're never out um, and even even when we beat them in, in Chicago like they came back and I think the most impressive thing about that game was what you know even though New Zealand came back at us and you're thinking oh here we go again you know Ireland found another gear and, and got those tries so even though they kind of they stoked the beast and uh, New Zealand were coming back at them, and you're thinking that's the, the usual storyline here again. But uh, but Ireland you know, had that resolve, and that was that was the most impressive thing, I think. Conrad, you played against uh, Ireland in 2008 at Crow Park against Wally as well, and uh, that's a day that I know Trimby remembers as well. D did you realise it was such a big deal to to play at Crow Park at that time? Because it was obviously hugely significant in Ireland. We played against England in 07 and had a massive game. Yeah. It was equally significant for. For Kiwis and Protestants at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, it, it is something. You know, I think the All Blacks do well. We um, always recognise the significance of, of games and, and grounds. And you know, I, I was actually part of a information committee or whatever we had in the team um, at the time. Um, and so I actually had to do a bit of research about the ground. We'd obviously knew a little bit, but um, you know, and then. I remember speaking to the team. We had a captain's run at the, at the ground, a little walk through, and, um, and and telling the team about the the place, the significance, the history, and um, you know, I, I think it's important that we recognise that because we didn't want to be ambushed by you know an Irish side that were playing at, at such a special place and how it would mean so much to them. And so for us to to recognise that, and you know, it gives us a bit of a lift. So you know, we all, we'd always do that. It's a bit of a respect for. The teams are playing and, and the places that we play. So, so that's, that information committee, that's a thing that the All Blacks do for every team, is it? You'll actually go and find out something about the team and the ground and... Yeah, obviously it's not always going to be like that, you know, you're not always playing at a place that special, but, um, you know, for sure, you whether it's a trophy, when we play England, we're playing for the Hillary Shield and, you know, there's some guys that don't know who Ed Hillary is or don't know what he achieved and so you, you, you take the time to explain that and it's not long, it might be five minute chat before uh, you go up for a captain's run or a bit longer when you're playing at somewhere like Croke Park but it's, uh, yeah, it's something, you know, the All Blacks, they don't like to leave uh, a stone unturned as they say so you're always thinking about um, things that can help the team. So week, weeks like this, Conrad, you've obviously just retired mm. fairly recently as well and even, even Wally, is it is it big weeks like this you miss it? Yeah, I, I suppose I I don't miss playing. That's for sure. The, um, you know, I had a good stint, and you know, I, I know there are guys that do miss the the, con the, the contact and the, and the playing. For for me, it's um, yeah, you're right. I, I suppose I, I get to a ground even at Twickenham. It was the first time I've been to Twickenham last week without playing. You know, and, and sort of walking up and and feeling the the buzz around the ground, and then I don't know. It's, it's makes you think back to the fact that you were a part of that buzz but actually in the arena and, and playing it um, you know, makes you realise what, what you've achieved and, and maybe what you've done but um, yeah, to be, to be honest you know, I, I had a really good stint, I feel very fortunate so I don't miss being out there I'm, uh, I've done my dash Yeah, so it's one, it's one thing to feel like you're ready for, for finishing up rugby but it's another thing to feel like you're ready to work <laughs> yeah. to get a real job but Wally, you, you've got a, you've got a nice little little kind of concept. If, if it catches on, it <laughs> might help a lot of people cope with the real world. Well, look, I think it's about being efficient, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we were talking about it earlier. You, you brought it up. So myself and Dunners kind of fashioned this new day. I think it was was when we were kind of, you know, we're obviously based in two camps in Munster, and, and they were trying to maximise every waking minute we have. So you always felt like you're on the hamster wheel. So we were, I kind of we came up with the concept that you know you take four hours off each day, so that gives you what another yeah multiply that you get maybe another 24 hours or whatever, and you create your own little muse day in, in between. So I think it's it was it was kind of probably on the back of, of going to Spala as well, 
Um, Those are long days, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, well, they used to make you train like five times a day, um, but because you had these cryotherapy chambers, you know, it, you know, that covered everything. You, you were rub, fine. You yeah. rub four hours from every day to create another day, and where do you put that other day, Wally? You, you fit in between Monday and Tuesday. All oh, right, Tuesday. okay. Yeah, I wouldn't What's have brought. I wouldn't have brought this up now. Uh, <laughs> you know, this is ten years on. Thanks, Trimby. This is brilliant. This is great stuff. <laughs> yeah. it's great stuff. This, I can imagine if you're in Spala. Gold. I can imagine if you're in Spala, and back then it was Mickey McGurn was the S and C coach. I can imagine he's going, right, I've got a nice five-day program for them. And <laughs> yeah. Wally's like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. a we have an extra weekend day in between Monday and Tuesday. Driving and efficiencies, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's going to go, well, stuff it, you're training six days there. <laughs> it's going to backfire. I like your idea. And I think Thanks, uh, Cheers, definitely... Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to invest those? Feels like it's the Dragon's Den. Yeah, we, have, we haven't this, really monetized this, it yet. This, it's, this, it's, uh, I'm going to invest idea. no money, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're here to talk, obviously, the big game at the weekend, the Guinness Series, New Zealand against Ireland. Steve Hansen has said whoever wins is the best team in the world. Um, Conrad, is that fair? <laughs> is the best team in the world going to win at the weekend? Yeah, or I mean, is, what, whatever win, that means. Um, yeah, it'll be. Uh, I mean, I mean, that's what I, I think's made it such a big event. I mean, everyone's talking about it. You can't get tickets. It's uh, you know, it's carrying a massive amount of importance. I think just the the fact that it's. I think it's quite rare that you get, you know, two teams, um, you know, and one in the south, one in the north that have had such a mm. you know rich vein of form, and, and now they are sort of meeting, and so that's what's. Um, driving, you know, the the hype around the game. So um, yeah, for for sure, you know, the the one that wins this is can certainly stake a claim that they've um, the the team of the moment, the team in the world, and what that means, you know, next year for a World Cup, I don't think means a lot. But uh, you know, for for Saturday night, it's it's going to be special for whoever wins. That's for sure. Do the All Blacks look at Ireland as the big threat? in the Northern Hemisphere, just sorry, the, the biggest threat to their chances of winning the Rugby World Cup, or, or even after having played England, are they kind of beginning to reevaluate? I mean, we're uh, always well, fascinated to know just how, where yeah. we stand, because we, we think we're pretty good, but what does everybody else think? Like, no, no, I, I think, um, you know, obviously not being, you know, involved for the last few years, but, you know, from my experience, for sure, at, at the moment, We'd, we'd look at, um, you know, Ireland as a, t a team playing really good rugby, a, gr a great team that um, is going to prove a huge test for, for this weekend. And to be honest, I, I don't think the team, maybe the coaching staff will be, but the team, the players won't be looking far beyond that. Like, a lot is made about World Cup and what this, the bearing it'll have. Man, it, to be honest, a year out from a World Cup it, as a player, yeah, it, it, it didn't mean a lot. You, you just want to win the game because... You know, you're playing against it. It's a test match for the All Blacks. It's massive anyway. You know, the team's really good. They've been playing really well. So that's going to, you know, carry a lot of uh, significance. But, yeah, you, you're not thinking about a World Cup, to be honest. And yet there's such keenly contested games. Um, like, just looking along this, these two, uh, you know, sofas here, think of all the caps that the four of us have that we share, <laughs> haven't played <laughs> for our respective nations, like hundreds of caps. Um, but I, actually, this just shows you how competitive Ireland and New Zealand always is, even if it isn't always close. Uh, this is you underneath pretty much half the Irish team. How does well, that happen? Well spotted. I have no idea what's happening there. What's the context for that picture? <laughs> it takes eight guys to tackle him. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. I've, I've, I must have made a tackle here. I don't know. <laughs> Are you laughing as well? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's just like, is that, a, is that all you've got? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I don't know. I can't explain that. You've, it looks like you've been isolated there, Conrad, it's fair to say. Yeah, and the rest, of the, the rest of the All Blacks are doing their own thing. Um, obviously, those games were incredibly hotly contested. Um, I mean, we've talked about some of your old memories of, of the game, and we're all really looking forward to it. Uh, we have uh, another show in the UK called House of Rugby as well, and Mike Tyndall, you mentioned your research on the, the research committee uh, for the English team. Well, Mike has been talking about Ireland, and he's been saying that basically he doesn't really rate Ireland as highly as some other, other people rate Ireland, maybe ourselves included. He's been talking about it the weekend that if, they get, if New Zealand get nine line breaks, like basically Argentina did last weekend, hmm. that we're, we're finished. I mean... He's been trash-talking. He's been trash-talking, right, 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 yeah. Right. 
Um, is, that, is that something that New Zealand would have looked at Ireland and thought, uh, yeah, the, the, uh, having watched the, Ar the Argentina game, they're a weakness that can be exploited? Oh, no more, you know, they'd do that every, every game. That, um, you know, they've been... Uh, especially some of the coaching staff would have looked at a lot of video of all the recent games, not just the Argentinian one, and they'll have a few areas that they'll want to attack the same way the Irish would, you know, towards the All Blacks. But, um, no, look, I, I don't think they'd have any um, view view like that. I mean, uh, I, I think what against the English team on the weekend, I think we made 15 or so, line, you know, a lot of line breaks and didn't convert many of them. So... Um, you know that that would be more a area of focus for for the team. You know, on ourselves and how we need to make sure that if we are even able to get nine or ten line breaks, we uh, capitalise on them better than they did against the English. Because the Irish, I you know, they will view the Irish as a better team than the English. Like that's no doubt, and they'll be preparing to to improve. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, they will be wanting to right improve things, on Conrad. the performance, and they will be saying, "Look, if we played like we did on the weekend, we will, you know we'll lose." So um, yeah, that, that's I, I think the whole mentality for the for this week. We 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 used to never be able to cope with injuries, um, mm. and now we're at the point where we've we've got a little bit of strength and depth, and yeah. we've kind of got that luxury, I suppose, to that. It's not risky anymore because we got like so. Wally, the example there is Sean O'Brien picks up a knock and someone like Dan Levy comes in. We yeah, don't, we don't lose Jonathan anymore. And there's still really? Josh Van der Fleer, you know, still Mike yeah. Roddy, you know, it's still another two, three, four other guys to come in, and, and we've such a, a, a you know richness there in, in the back row. Um, and as you said, kind of right throughout the squad nowadays. Obviously, Connor Murray is is the big mm. glaring one because I think he is he is, is such a talented player, and, and a lot of Ireland's game, Munster's game, revolves around him. So take him out he's he's a big factor in it um but you know i think i think uh Marmion has been going very well and and uh so is mcgrath you know so i think it's a chance to blood these guys you never know what's going to happen in the world cup remember back to 15 and that was that's what happened to us really wasn't it? we got kind of we got a, a massive slew of injuries like six six key players gone in in, in the that open was the lesson that was the lesson learned wasn't it yeah and that's that really hurts joe i think and he's he's i think there was some amazing stat of the amount of players he's used uh, since 2015 World Cup, is somebody 77, and, and there's 34 or five of them are, are new caps. So he's been churning in the new caps, getting guys blood. It helps that the provinces are going well as well at the same time. But um, and it's given given him, I suppose, a conveyor belt of talent too. But he still has to bring those guys into camp. And you know, we always hear about young guys getting into camp and and, and experiencing the way Joe coaches and, and getting them in at an early age to kind of know what, what what he expects, what are his little, you know, pet peeves and what are the things he's hot on and, 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 and that he sows those seeds very early, I think. Yeah, you learn the, the young young fellas when they come into camp, they learn to cope with the stress. Yeah, well you've been there. I haven't been there. I only meet him on the street. I'm like, hey jeez, he's the he's the soundest yeah. guy. He's like That's not stressful though. <laughs> <no. laughs> yeah. He's he's but he's he's just so affable and you hear him public speaking and he's so witty and he's so you know yeah, obviously very great intellect as well. But um, and then you hear the stories about camp, and it's hard to marry the two, you know, that, that the guys are... I think Tommy, Tommy Bo did a gig with him once before, didn't he, where he was, uh, he was on before him, and then Joe went up after him, and uh, he, Tommy turned to someone and said, I don't know what Joe Smith you have, but that's not the Joe Smith <laughs> yeah, I know. So, yeah, I think he's able to balance, balance it, and obviously has the, gets his message across incredibly well to the players, but they really respect him too, and, and, mm -hmm. and he's, he's here a long time in Ireland. He still has commands that respect. Is, he, is he as well thought of mm. in, in New Zealand, Conrad? Yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, I, I think just the, the record you know, that he's had with the, the Irish team, it's, um, you know, he, uh, to be fair, you know, when he left New Zealand, it wasn't um, talked about, you know, he, he hadn't um, achieved a lot in New Zealand, so it wasn't as if, oh, you know, we've lost a big coach, but... Obviously, you know, what, what he's achieved since then is, um, you know, the attention of the world, but also in, in New Zealand. So, yeah, there's uh, a, a lot of um, Kiwis that would love to welcome him back. Um, Next All Blacks coach? Well, yeah, who, who knows? I mean, that's a decision that's, to be honest, I, I thought would have been made a lot earlier, you know, when we had Steve, um, you know, obviously played under him for a while and, he he was always of the you know and told us that he wouldn't be still coaching even now. So um, I, I know after the 2015 World Cup, we 
they were looking already for, for a replacement and he was obviously mentioned, Joe was obviously mentioned, but um, Steve stayed on and, yeah, look, that's um, not a decision for me, but, you know, he, he's obviously going to be um, someone in the picture. Trimby, I think we've been very stupid. I think we're bigging him up too much and it's just, you know, like we're selling him to New Zealand. I think we've got <laughs> I know, a great thing. Yeah. You know, kind of lay him down <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Once you get to know him, he's not... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just luck. It's just luck. <laughs> yeah, luck. Exactly. Uh, Conrad, a lot of people have been talking about the 2016 game. Um, it's interesting because for us, it was a huge deal to beat the All Blacks, obviously. This man here has very fond memories of... of Guilty. Of, of that day. He was you were there, weren't you? I was there, yeah. He, was there. Uh, <laughs> he does... He, he mentions it occasionally. Occasionally likes to bring I'm, it up. I'm, I'm actually sickening myself talking <laughs> about it. For a while, I was going... I don't care. Everybody else is fed up me talking about it. But I'm going to keep doing it anyway. I now I'm genuinely fed up listening <laughs> to my own stories. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it was, it was very special indeed. Now it was... Um, Everything, that, everything, the whole build-up to the whole thing just made it more and more special. The Cubs winning the World Series and the history and everything, and uh, I have a lot of, lot of good memories. And I think whenever you retire, um, you boys, I'm sure, will agree with this, but you, you, look, you look back at, uh, and you bump into lads that you used to play with, and you're like, oh, do you remember we did this together? Do you remember this story? All the fun. Like, most of it's off the pitch. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah. There's some on the pitch is grand, you know, but, but that one there, everything, the whole run-up, um, the whole atmosphere, the buzz, the excitement, and then the win. I'm looking at Conrad as if I'm like, do you remember me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were watching it. Wasn't it great? Yeah. I know, like, yeah. yeah. Watch it. We, we, we have quite a few Irish in the team, so I remember it well. We, we watched it, and I actually think I slunk away to my room because we were at the hotel <laughs> for half. our own game, and we were watching it down you know, in the, next to the restaurant, the group, and... I, 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 I sensed what was happening. I was like, we're not going to win this. I don't want to be around these guys. <laughs> 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 so I went yeah, the the game by myself. Oh. Did you, did you um, slink off to your room by yourself? just before half time, and then whenever things started going wrong for Aaron, did you come back down <laughs> and then go out again? No, no, I actually, I slunk away very early, and I, I don't know, I just had a feeling watching it, I just knew the, the Irish were up. I remember I talked to a couple of the All Black boys during the week, and I know sometimes you get a feeling about things, and I just thought they weren't quite on, mm. um, you know, because the game was in America, and uh, just things like that, and then... There was a few photos that were going around as well. They, yeah. they were at the ticker tape parade, weren't they, with the yeah. clubs and, and yeah. that, and, yeah. and you kind of just sensed that yeah. their, yeah. their eye was off the ball that week. And that's they were what was trimmy, though, we were, we, were trimmy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. we were doing all the exact same stuff. We actually bumped into them at the Chicago Bulls training facility. Right, yeah. like, oh, it was one of those awkward ones. Like, oh, <laughs> see you on Saturday. <laughs> 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 and then they get a hard time for not concentrating all week. And we were doing exactly the same thing they yeah, did. Yeah. So it's one of those ones after the game, you try and put it down to something and yeah. it's hard to know. But um, yeah, it was certainly it was a good week now. Is it, uh, is it for the All Blacks really, like for us it was such an incredible moment in history, the history of the mm. country playing rugby. Come so close so often, mentioned 2001, but there was loads more, obviously 13 as well. Like it's for the All Blacks, is it really annoying to lose a perfect record like that? Oh yeah. Like, and... As a player, like, and even the guy, like, you don't want to be the one to, to be on lose. That team. You know, like, it was, you, you don't, you don't mention it. I don't think it's healthy to like, like, we don't talk about even playing the other teams you've never lost to. But you all know it, you know, and, and whether you get reminded in the media or whatnot. So, um, yeah, like I say, it's not something spoken about, but you, you just, yeah, it's part of the rich All Black history that you've haven't lost to many. Teams that play internationally fewer than anyone else, any other international teams in the world. So, yeah, you just don't want to be in that team that that is the one to lose. And it, there's a, a sense that you know playing someone as good as Ireland, it was always going to happen. Even you know Argentina, we've never lost to. I, no doubt they'll, they'll. I think they'll be the team next team. They're a great side. They will knock us over. I, I think you know. Hopefully not soon. And, and and I just know for the players, they don't want to be that one. So you just try and push it out as, as long as you can and I was just glad it didn't happen on my watch <laughs> <laughs> let, that one. let the record show Conrad wasn't there on the day <laughs> but Trimby was everybody <laughs> remember that as well that's even more important yeah so what do we think then predictions wise this weekend 
You're looking at me first. Um, I'd like to keep it for for World Cup final, I think. But I I I, I think look where we are. We we just came together last week. You know, there's a little bit of, of an off day in in terms of Argentina. Still had a great victory, 11 points. Um, but there was you know a few errors. Um, and I think just a few injuries, obviously, you know, Henshaw and Connor. I think, you know, we might just be, might be uh, a little bit, little bit off on that front. So, Hi, I don't I'm know. patriotic. <laughs> I know I'm going to be hated. I'm going to be hated, aren't I? Yeah. So, the so I'm going to go for a draw. A draw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, politician David Wallace. Uh, Conrad? Conrad, whenever, um, whenever uh, a lady asks you how old do you think they are, and you, you decide in your head what age you think they are, and then you take like five years off, six, seven, eight years off. <laughs> Is that what you're going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> because we've got an Irish audience here, and you're just going to have to be like fake, fake humble. Yeah. Tell us what you really think. Oh, Ed, five points on. Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 I don't know. I, I think, um, you know, I just placed myself in the All Black camp. They, I, I don't think they played that bad last week, you know, the... The English played well at the start of the game. I was really impressed with the way the team came back. And I don't know, I, I think like both teams, they will be building, you know, for this one, it would have been the big game for this, for the all-black side. They would have been really preparing for this game. So in, in a big game like this, you know, I, I back them to to win. And um, oh, I'll say eight points. Oh. Eight, eight points. Eight oh, points. That's a big okay. cocky. Was it, it was an audible gasp there from someone in the, <laughs> in the crowd. It's like, what? Eight? Um, just before you go as well, we're all, uh, I suppose, obsessed with Bowden Barrett, like I suppose the rest of the rugby world. Scored his first drop goal at the weekend against England, yeah. which we were all uh, pretty amazed by as a stat that he's never done it in a game before. Um, I mean, he's an incredible player, you know, obviously, from your time at the club. I mean, at Hurricanes. I mean, like, for you... Is he, the, is he a match winner at the week? Well, he's always a match winner, potentially. Mm. But uh, could he be the man that makes the difference? Yeah, absolutely. He's, uh, he's an incredible player. Uh, you know, he, he kicked a drop goal because it was a challenge put out by the media, you know. Like, mm. like if, if that had happened, that's the sort of guy he is. Wow. Four years ago, someone said, oh, you know, there's big headlines, Bodie Barrett hasn't kicked a drop goal. He'd kick a drop goal in the next game. Like, I know the guy, he's... A freakish talent, and um, you know, I, I just think, um, yeah, you know, he, he, he's not Dan Carter, but um, that, that, that's not to say which one's better. You know, that he's he's a he is a phenomenal player, and he can win a game. And that's not to say he, he can't be put under pressure, and 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 then like any player, that, that can put pressure on the rest of the team if you one of your key drives is not functioning. Um, and so that, that's what he deals with as the player that he is. He'll, Ireland will probably target him, and as they should, but uh, he absolutely, you know, if he has a good day, then um, he, he can make the All Blacks win. And, yeah. and that's the sort of guy he is. The takeaway there is Irish media do not mention that <laughs> Bowden Barr has never scored five tries <laughs> in, in an All Blacks jersey because we know what could happen you, you in, that, in that scenario. <laughs> Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, would you please uh, give a very big round of applause to David Wallace and Conrad Smith. Hey guys. Now, um, as we mentioned, Trimbury, Trimbury brought a lovely shirt into the office the other day with those enormously long cuffs. Um, but that was because you had a, a very... Just a special occasion. A special occasion. Uh -huh. I was getting to meet uh, some rugby royalty in the form of uh, Tana Umanga. Yes. So I got the call the other day, a couple of days before, Trimby, come down to Dublin and uh, you can interview Tana. I went, absolutely, I'm there. So um, th that was my big moment. <laughs> First interview, straight in the deep end, Draco and Tana. No yeah, bother. yeah, it was, it was, I mean, you've met a lot of All Blacks legends. You met Conrad and, and Tana and, and Jeff and Justin. You know, it's just, you're on a bit of a roll here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, the uh, Guinness brought the two boys together for a, a pint. Uh, Tana Umanga and Brian O'Driscoll, and as we mentioned, Trimby sat down with Tana to have a chat about his career <laughs> and burying the hatchet with Bod as well. Check it out. Tana, 
What's a crack with Brian? Is he? He's a bit of a baby, isn't he? <laughs> I don't know. Man. He's a very good bloke. Yeah. Where did you get to know him? <laughs> so weird. So you keep saying. Yeah. Um, no, I've been, uh, it's been a really good uh, good time here in Dublin catching up with Brian again. You know, we. Uh, You've done the rounds. You've been out for dinner and yeah, caught up with a few we had, uh, dinner at the Guinness House and yeah. Um, yeah, a few pints and got a uh, good knowledge of uh, Guinness. You know, there's more than uh, you know one one type. I, I was oh. surprised to learn. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh, it's huge, huge in Africa apparently. Yeah. So. Uh, really. Yeah. Yeah. You've done a bit of homework. I have for the brand. I was listening. I yeah. was listening. I know. Good man. Yeah, but yeah, look, um, and it was just uh, to reconnect with, with Brian and, and uh, you know catch up with what life's happening and yeah. things like that. He's a busy man. Yeah, very busy He's man. Out, yeah. yeah, it's whenever you finish. I've, I've only discovered this in the last kind of six months, but whenever you finish, you get you feel like there's kind of more of an affinity or more of a connection with the guys that you played with and play against, because it's almost it seems like more nostalgic or something. I don't know if that's something you've experienced. Well, Definitely, I, I suppose I'm, I'm working with, uh, as a coach now, with you know, the new generation coming through, and yeah. uh, you know, as, as we all know, it's different now. It's different this generation, and uh, like I say, I can agree with you upon that. Around, uh, you know, probably more affinity with, uh, you know, people my own age. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> coming through that, because um, yeah, sometimes the struggle is, is real for some, is not the same for others. Yeah, no, no, fair enough. So anyway, the All Blacks are on. On tour this weekend, and they're out for, I suppose, I was going to say the All Blacks are out for a big scalp, but <laughs> that's I'm massively flattering this Irish team. But um, certainly they're on New Zealand's radar at the minute. What way do you see the, the game going at the weekend? Oh, look, I'm, I'm obviously like every other Irishman too, and I'm very patriotic for the All Blacks, yeah. and uh, um, you know, the heart will, and always goes that way. Yet, when you're looking, looking depth at it, it's going to be tough, no mm -hmm. doubt about it. Uh, uh, the Irish, you know, with the pack that they have and the way that they're playing, the confidence they've got, um, you know, it's, it's going to be tricky. As, as we've been talking with Brian and, and you know yourself, you know, we end up talking a lot around forwards and which we don't know a lot about, and it's it's hard to give them the respect and uh, you know the accolades that uh, that we have to. But you know, as you do, you know, that's where the game's going to um, start, and that's yeah. where it's usually won or lost. And, yeah. I think the physicality that the, the Irish forwards are playing with at the moment and, and the skill level and um, just their execution has, has, has been huge and uh, I think that's where New Zealand have to either nullify them you know, to get the game that they want, we want to play. As, you know, as we know, that's, you know, we like to throw the, the, the ball around and, and yeah. take advantage of the opportunities, yet you know, if we, we haven't got enough front foot ball, it's hard, hard to have those opportunities. Yeah, yeah. If, um uh, who are the threats in particular then in, in this Irish side? I mean, if, who would get into a New Zealand 15? Um, oh, I think, you know, what's what pertinent for the Irish game, obviously, you know, I think whether Cotter Murray plays is, is a big deal. You know, we saw what he did when he came across with the Lions, what he did against the All Blacks uh, at, at that day too. Just his pinpoint accuracy, his competitiveness, uh, uh, um, his toughness, I, I love him as a defender as well, yeah. as a nine that... He's got everything, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, so we're hoping he doesn't make a miraculous recovery and come back to his own because I think he's important, obviously. And um, you know, Johnny Sexton, the way he's playing and, and how he uh, drives that, that, that team around. And uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how uh, you know, Sean O'Brien, because we know... You know, you, you, I talked again with Brian, we've been talking about it, but you know, some, some players that you know, give others around them confidence when he's on the field. And he's definitely one of those. Sean, he's definitely one of those. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and he, he, he's had that confidence building, you know, um, uh, experiences around what it takes to beat the All Blacks, you know, and, mm -hmm. and he, he's been huge in all those games. So, yeah. you know, someone like him being on the field will, will, will make a, a, you know, a massive impact. You know, yeah, absolutely. Irish. What about the dual effect? How you um, how big a threat is this Ireland team like, with and without Joe? And uh, like, Ireland have always competed well to a certain extent. It just seems like Joe just brings them to this next level of kind of accuracy and execution. Look, I, I can only go on what you know the results that have have come from what Joe's achieved. It, you know, and that's that's amazing. You know the, the amount of successes he's had. Um, you know how he's been able to build something here. You know first with Leinster, now with. Uh, um, with Ireland, 
uh, my experiences with Joe, uh, he's the nicest guy. Um, you know, I'm hearing stories that he's a hard man, mm. you know, and I'm, I don't see that, you know, and so it gives me uh, great pleasure to say, oh, you can still be that way these days, you know, and, and, uh, and uh, be the, the taskmaster that can say no and, and not have to, you know, um, keep asking opinions. So, yeah, you know. is it looking in from, uh, from NZ, are you kind of going, he's doing really well with, with Ireland, but he's one of ours? Is that, is that the feeling or is, is, it, is there kind of a, a feeling of inevitability that we'll get him back eventually? Um, I think to your first party question, definitely. You know, he, like he's, we always see him as, as part of ours, as we do any Kiwi or New Zealander that's doing well overseas. You know, it's just like anything that anyone that has success, yeah. you want to align yourself with it. Um, I, I don't think it's a uh, fait accompli that he's going to, you know, return because like, he's, he's achieved, he's made such a name for himself over here. You know, again, it's always what does Joe want? Mm. You know? mm -hmm. But I think he, he's probably put himself out there that, you know, whatever he wants, you know, with the reputation that he has now, you know, he, he could probably get it, you know, if yeah. he keeps working at it. There's not know? that many coaches have that luxury of being able to call the shots. There's, there's Alex Ferguson and there's Joe Schmidt. <laughs> and that's it, really. Well, there you go, you know, and that's, that's saying something when you're comparing himself to. You know, Alex, Sir Alex Ferguson and uh, what he's achieved. Mm -hmm. well, anyway, Tana, thanks a lot for coming along. No worries, Ed. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Good morning. Cheers, brother. Okay, our next guest has been uh, lighting it up. Even as an Ulster supporter, a loyal Ulster supporter for 13 years, I'm a massive fan. So please welcome a future Irish international James Lowe. Hey! <laughs> Jesus, man. How's it going? Yeah, it's good to see you. Oh. So, um, James, we, we'll start off by asking you, have you been learning the words to Oron Naveen yet? <laughs> Come on, mate. You can't be uh, putting me on the spot with your first question, but... Uh, what is that? Is don't that worry, Trimby can teach you. Is that you? Murray? Is that what can that you? is? <laughs> <laughs> I can, I can <laughs> barely understand him, that naughty accent on him. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, Ireland's call will be fine. Ireland's call is fine. Thanks. Don't be bashful now, come on. What do you mean? Don't be shy. Don't be shy about your, your oh, Irish I, future. I, you really put me in a tough, uh, tough situation here, obviously, with a few All Black legends. Yeah. Uh, wandering around some Irish legends as well. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, was uh, was well, Tana a big, um, a big hero of yours growing up? Uh, yeah, I'm actually a hero of my mum's, to be fair. Um, <laughs> She's gutted that she knows he's, <laughs> he's in the city and uh, my mother hasn't met him yet. So um, he's definitely one of, one of the greatest to ever put on the black jersey. And I mean, the dude who filled it after him wasn't too bad either. So <laughs> yeah. um, no, he's a great man. Yeah, yeah. So Tan um, Tana versus Conrad. That'd be a nice <laughs> big uh, partnership actually, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. Um, but I mean, oh, they're, they're both very great in their own ways, aren't they? I mean, Conrad was sort of the glue and Tana had a bit more X-Factor, I think, but uh, I mean, Conrad had Ma'a with him as well, the big wrecking ball, so they were both great All Blacks and they were, Yeah, you know. you've, uh, James, you've, you've just settled in like it's been nothing to you, mm. just in the last year, it just seems like you've become a massive crowd favourite. Obviously, it helps <laughs> winning European Cups mm. <laughs> and playing out of your skin and scoring tries for fun, but I mean... Is, is Dublin just that sort of place? Have you just you made it your home? Um, I, I, like I, I fell on my feet really when I when I got here. You know, I I ended up at a club which uh, was was obviously going quite well. There's a lot of Irish internationals, a lot of very very good Irish internationals as well. And uh, I guess when I did turn up, I was just, I was a bit lost. I'd already played 12, 12 months of footy as well. But uh, I got here, turned up in a professional environment, and everyone wanted to win. Uh, I had Johnny Sexton breathing down my neck for most of it, you know, and uh, at the end of the day, it's you just want to make sure he's happy, so... Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's it. We've, I've been on the receiving end oh, some yeah. hard time he gives oh, out. Yeah, when, when Jonathan's got his hat on or his beanie down, like, nice and low, like, uh, like down here, that's when you know he means business. Yeah. <laughs> you've got... So. You, um, You've got a, a truce. You've got a bit of a ceasefire with Johnny at the minute, have you? Yeah, we've got a professional relationship now. <laughs> uh, not to say we, we ever that did That sounds like you, you were sleeping with him for a while, but no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, not quite on that level, but um, no, I mean, it was just... Uh, I just felt when I got here, the, uh, a lot of those Irish internationals, no one really pushed their buttons. And uh, 
I always I always push people's buttons, whether it's for the good or the bad, and I wanted to go for the big dog first yeah. up, and uh, I got a good reaction out of it, you know, but uh, he, he's, he's always the winner winner at the end of the day. Like like when you arrive in prison and you take on the big guy. Yeah, you, yeah, they, they don't they don't go for the crazy dude, you know, yeah. if you if you attack him, but uh, I mean, he, he really put it to me when he hit that drop goal against France, you know, uh, we're at the pub and we almost brought the brought the roof down. So uh, he's a very very good player. Yeah, I know. I must I must confess, I'm a big fan. Mm. Um, again, even as as an Ulster man, he's he'd be a good mate of mine. But he wouldn't be popular with um, Ulster supporters, maybe. Mm. And then he, just in the press this week, um, the Kiwi press conference, they they were giving off about Johnny as well. <sighs> yeah, <I've, clears throat> I mean he's. He's got a heart of gold, you know, and he's a very, very professional player. He's a very good player as well. I think this this week is going to really test both the tens out, you know. I mean, they're going to have, like you said earlier, they're going to have a game plan to go after each other. Uh, but, uh, I mean, you know the media's job. They're there to stir the pot, so uh, any reaction they can get, they'll always, always try their best. Uh, but I think, I mean, he's got a very cool head. Uh, for, if the Ford packs stand up to it, it's going to be an awesome game. Yeah. So, um, world's best team versus second best team in the world. I think that's reflected in, in the tens. Are these the two best number tens in the world? I, uh, yeah, I do. I do think. I think they're different tens. Um, obviously, I've played with Jonathan. I've played against Bowden, and uh, they're both they're both very good tackling tens. They both put shots on me, um, yeah. and they're both. They're, I mean, the kicking game. I think. Bowden's probably a lot more, well, obviously a lot more explosive um, and can create something out of, out of nothing. But Jonathan's got that cool, calm and collective head on him when the pressure's on. Like, he, he'll always be there. You know, he's the man you, man you look to. Not to say that Bowden isn't, for sure. Uh, but, oh, it's, it's an awesome prospect and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. So, um, your mum and dad are here tonight. Yeah. So, just welcome them along. Yeah. Thanks for coming, Good parents. Good to have you. Yeah. <clears throat> What are their What are their names, James? Uh, Yvonne, Yvonne and Jeff. They, uh, Yvonne and Jeff. They heard They heard you were here, so uh, they flew over for this. <laughs> They're big fans. Going, Trimby, going Trimby, home tomorrow. Trimby's the pinup now. He's uh, He's a media pinup. Uh, Do they subscribe to the podcast? None of that. <laughs> oh, mate, my dad. My dad doesn't know how to use a cell phone. <laughs> you said You said put it on silent earlier, and uh, there's no way he knows how to put it on silent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> So they're obviously, um, obviously very supportive, very proud of their mm. GMs. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. yeah. Um, but will yeah. they be as proud when you're wearing green? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's another bridge we'll cross when we get there, you know. But that um, is just giving the thumbs up there, I should say. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Um, but you know, like uh, they've, they've always been very supportive of me. They both came to literally every game. Uh, growing up when I was a kid, uh, we lived in a little town called Nelson, and. Uh, Every second week, they'd be down in Christchurch, which was a five and a half hour drive away, you know. So, uh, my old man's been been there through thick and thin, and now he's over here. And uh, hopefully, if I get to play against the Ospreys in a couple of weeks' time, uh, they'll be here for that. So, uh, fingers crossed. It's a big move, obviously, to come so far from your home and and move to a country like Ireland. That's you know, like, it's not a, what is it, a 20-hour plane journey, yeah. I mean, for friends and family? Yeah. Uh, did you find it difficult just to, to arrive and to fit in? Because it uh, looks, from the outside, it looks like you just landed on your feet and yeah. you've just taken everything in your stride, James. Yeah, I mean, at, at the end of the day, I'm here to play rugby, and it's the one thing, one thing I'm decent at, you know, so the rugby side's all, all easy, and it's pretty much the only thing you really do see, but, I mean, it's, it does suck not having family or immediate family around, but... Um, it's easy enough to, to call home, you know, like uh, I've got a, uh, I'm an uncle now of a, of a little one and he seems to have taken over the mantle back home. <laughs> He's taken over my room as well. He doesn't even live at my, at the family gaff, you know, and, uh, but I mean, they're a phone call away and I, I mean, I'd talk to my parents or, or my brother and sister like once a day. So it's, it, it does suck you're not there for the big occasions, the Christmas and the birthdays, you know, but I mean, I'm, I'm also living in Dublin yeah. and footy, so that's a, that's a be, price you've got to pay. It could be a lot worse. Now, look, at um, we mentioned at the top you've electrified both fans and, in fairness, uh, I think your press conferences have been amazing as well. But 
we'll come to that a little bit later. Would everyone like to see James Lowe in action? I think that would be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not here right now. Not just going to throw you the ball. And yeah. uh, let's have a look at uh, James doing what he does best, mm -hmm. which is sticking tries away. Let's have a look at this. Good contest there from Niall Scannell over the ball. Gibson Park. Now he's got options on the short side. One of which is Lowe, and Lowe's going, and Lowe gets in. Oh, that is a great finish from the New Zealander. He stayed high until the last minute, and then he went low, and he had the presence of mind. Incessant, relentless pressure, but there's Munster's hands on that. And now Gibson Park over the top. And low, and low again. And did he get there? And if he did, oh, he did he? He seemed to have absolutely no room to work with. No pitch whatsoever. James, you're killing it. You're absolutely mm -hmm. killing it. Um, your, um, your strike rate's incredible. You're scoring tries for fun. One, one criticism. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> your high fives <laughs> are just extremely inaccurate. Mm. Um, you're, I mean, it was fine for me. I didn't have that many opportunities to <laughs> high five or celebrate, right? But you do it regularly. So is that a work on? As, uh, as yeah, I got tagged in something like this about a month or two ago. I didn't know what you're talking about, but um, there's actually a clip where Dev, 16 Dev's walking off, you know, yeah. and I go for a high five, and he's just like struddles on past, oh. and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, oh, sweet, thanks. Yeah, if you can find that clip, honestly, that's. Um, I heard about that clip. Yeah, but I haven't yet seen it. Yeah, like that's. I thought the clip was coming when you'd said I was terrible at high fives, and yeah. it was kind of just finished there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, you just, do find it. I haven't. Although, that, to be fair, it was a while back. Maybe you've been working on it. I don't know. Like doing your extras. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. You know? you know, catch, pass, kick. High five. Yeah, it's, yeah. All, it's all in the mix. Crucial, <laughs> crucial. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. Uh, one other criticism. Oh, Go on, keep going. <laughs> yeah. So uh, John O'Gibbs was coached uh, yeah. coached in Belfast for a while there, and uh, he's actually a fairly, a fairly decent, well thought of coach. If Joe goes on, heaven forbid, if Joe goes on and someone like John O'Gibbs comes in there, I think you're going to have to lose the top knot. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh he took he took the guy pete brown plays in the second row for us yeah pete, pete arrived english guy posh guy really funny he arrived out to training one day and he had just grown his hair just to the point where he could execute a top yeah. knot and um jono goes what's the crack with the top knot there mate and pete goes it's stylish and functional. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Johnny goes, um, I've never coached someone with a top knot. I'm not about to start today. Oh, well, I don't think, yeah, well, it's Jono or me, really, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> nah, he's, Jono's a great man, don't get me wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> You've come across Jono before? Yeah, so he's from, um, he's a Waikato legend, like where, um, where I played, you know, he, he captained the Māori All Blacks, I think, in 2006 mm. as well, uh, when they beat the British and Irish Lions, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but he, yeah, 05, 2005. Your dad actually. is saying 05. Yeah, I know, lucky he's here. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he did, he captained that side, you know, and um, I mean, he's, he's a legend, a legend in that province, um, as I'm sure you are up in Ulster still, so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a dig, like. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's, he is a great man. He is. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm a bit. Uh, <laughs> that you wasn't know, where I wanted that to go. It's fine. You, you heard Trimby beat the All Blacks. <laughs> oh, I'm contractually obliged to say uh, that twice in the show, so, you yeah. know. I'm yeah. covered now. Yeah, I was, I was actually at that game in, in Chicago. Oh, wow. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, um, so we were there with the Māori All Blacks. We'd played USA the night before, and um, the flight was split. The Fords went in the morning, and we went in the afternoon, so we managed to um, go to the game. And, I mean, it was, it was, a, it was an awesome atmos atmosphere, and the Irish played really well. You know, they were clinical at the end of that game, so... <laughs> yeah, they, they won, <laughs> yes. Um, you know, and, I mean, credit where credit's due. Um, they they played better on the day, and that was the result. Yeah. What um, what's the big difference then? Um, looking forward to this weekend's game. Um, in your experience, being here long enough to kind of get an mm. appreciation of how the the best club in Europe are doing it. Yeah. What's the big difference between how we approach rugby up here and how it is back home? Um, there's 
I mean, a lot of a lot of similarities. Don't get me wrong, but I think uh, the All Blacks have been very dominant down south for a very long time, um, and in the north, I guess uh, Ireland play in the Six Nations every single year, and there's they have big games like these are huge. You know, they're going to Murrayfield, they're going to Millennium Stadium, they're going to Twickenham like every single year and playing in front of huge crowds. Not to say that they don't, that the All Blacks do back home, but it's a huge pressure cauldron mm. at the moment. Um, and that's where I think they close out games. I mean, Jonathan hit a 42 metre drop goal in the 82nd minute in France. I mean, not you name another 10 who, mm. who, who's done that, you know? Um, and that in, inevitably led to the, the Grand Slam. So, um, and then they went away to Twickenham uh, and they had to win that game. They'd already won the Six Nations, but to win the Grand Slam, and they were ruthless, you know. So um, I think they're very good at pressure rugby. Um, I think the All Blacks are, are exciting. I've got a lot of friends in both teams, you know. Um, it's going to be an awesome spectacle. Yeah. And will, that, will that always be the way? Will the conversation always be how close are Ireland or how close are the Northern Hemisphere to New Zealand? Or will it ever... I mean, what do we have to do? Do we have to ban GA and ban soccer? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think you can quite ban other sports but, uh, to that extent. But, um, I mean, rugby is bred into you from such a young age in New Zealand. Like, we're not that good at many other sports as well, like, um, on, on the world stage anyway. Um, and, I mean, when you're not playing rugby in the winter... Oh, you play touch in the summer as well, so you learn all the little skills, and everyone plays touch, you know. Uh, at lunchtime in the gym, my favourite pass, our, our year group, we would play rugby, so full-on league, in our socks in the gym. So you'd always be running straight and smashing each other, but you'd always have a rugby ball in your hand. You'd never get hurt, don't worry. But um, Only the other guys, James. And <laughs> <laughs> now, there were a lot of bigger kids than me at school, don't you worry. Um, but, yeah, I... The, uh, you could say the gap's closing, but like on the day, anyone can win, you know. Um, that's the thing. And I think Ireland are in a position where they've been playing good rugby for long enough to really challenge that. And um, it's, yeah, I don't want to say anything too bad, but I think it's going to be an awesome game. Um, James, we mentioned earlier on, obviously, the adjustment that comes with moving to a new country and mm. uh, playing for a new team and obviously moving so far from home. But it's really interesting to see some of the things that, um, some of the things you've been doing uh, mm. to assimilate into the culture and I suppose the team bond. And we heard about that recently in um, a press conference. Let's have a look at this. This is what you've been doing. Me and my girlfriend have really settled in. We're, we're enjoying our time here. She's enjoying her job. Um, and that's half of it. You get your life sorted off the field and on the field becomes easy. So, uh, like I said, paint, paint and Prosecco, I think, this tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know the Prosecco side, but uh, I'll, back, I'll back my painting skills and I'll tell you on Monday how we go. So, um, paint and Prosecco, surely the most D4 of all <laughs> team bonding experiences. Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure what happened to go-karting, but fair enough. Uh, um, go on. More like, more like pints and Prosecco. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, not too much painting going on, but um, we actually, it, was, it was a lot of fun, as much as I don't really want to admit it. It was, it was awesome crack. Like, uh, the girls really got into it. Uh, deceptively good was Dev Toner. Wow. He, was, he turned up 30 minutes late, mm -hmm. finished the same time as us, and his painting was by far the best. Uh, so I know I don't know what he does at home, uh, but you know, it's uh, that's big ten, uh, six ten div. Um, again, just in terms of like you know fitting in here, is there a big Kiwi crew in in Ireland, or are you just hanging out with Leinster teammates all the time? How does um, it work? Oh, like we've got I guess we've got a little foreign crew, you know, and you always go back to what you know. Um, but we've I mean, there's Jamison Gibson Park, Scott Fardy, uh, Joe Tamani now. Um, obviously, the goat and East is gone, unfortunately. But um, you know, oh, Michael Bent as well, uh, another good rural Kiwi. So um, no, we've got a good, got a great crew, and we hang out a lot on and off the field and uh, talk amongst ourselves. But it's not like we don't hang out with the with the Irish lads. Don't get me wrong, but uh, no, we. I don't know you just stick together, cause stick to what you know. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're almost at the end of our interview, which has been absolutely uh, brilliant chatting to you, James. But I think we've probably got to ask you, 
Um, who are you going to be backing at the weekend? Mm. It's a $64,000 um, question here. Yeah. Um, in terms of, I, I think it's going to be a very, very close game. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I thought both teams, uh, they weren't their clinical best in the previous week. Uh, Ireland, Argentina, New Zealand, England. Um, man, I... I, it's going to be a draw, obviously. Oh, come on! Uh, <laughs> safe, yeah. Uh, Wally, that, Wally's nodding along here in appreciation yeah, yeah. at your diplomacy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I think Ireland need to keep it tight and play a lot of pressure rugby because if you let, if you let the likes of that back three run rampant, you know, they're... Um, I mean, Damien McKenzie, Rico Ioani and Ben Smith's the first person you put in the team. Uh, I mean... <laughs> It scares me, and I'm not playing. So, uh, so do you, do you do you just go for it? Do you attack them at every opportunity, and so that if you have the ball, they don't have the ball? Uh, I, the, I said they. I mean, if, I mean the All Blacks, by the way, in Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if, like, uh, like if you were Joe Schmidt, obviously you want them to play as far away from your try line, you know. So obviously they're going to be. There's probably going to be a lot of kicking. Uh, I think there'll be a lot of contestable kicking as well. Um, I don't think you can take what happened at Twickenham too much in terms of like it was pouring down and rain with rain you know so um those boys are good under the high ball but it's somewhere that i think ireland would attack mm -hmm. through the strengths that they have um and uh, it's uh, i mean rico yuani is ridiculously quick damian mckenzie can create something out of nothing and then you've got ben smith the the man who can't do anything wrong so and ryan crotty who's done us previously and looked amazing when he came on against yeah. England. Yeah, like he, he's pretty much the glue in that midfield, you know. Mm. He's the, yeah, a man who can't do anything wrong. Um, he was actually at Krispy Kreme last night. Uh, <laughs> didn't hear that from me, but <laughs> I may have been there too. So, um, But yeah, they're very, very good players and, I mean, Ireland need to apply pressure and probably try and stop Bowden as best they can. We'll probably be watching, uh, if he starts, Jordan Larmer. I'm sure mm. people go out to me because I, I do bring him up quite a bit. No, uh, stop. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you obviously see him up close in training. Like, is he? Does he do ridiculous things? Yeah, he's a is, freak. Is he? Yeah, he's a. He's the closest thing to Damien McKenzie I've ever met. You wow. know, like um, he's a little bit bigger, um, unorthodox step. But I mean, you saw him against Italy, like just create stuff out of absolute thin air. You know, like three people around him, he pirouettes out and he's mm. running down the sideline. You know. Um, a, good, a good dude as well, someone who, who's a very good listener as well and takes, uh, takes everything on board. Uh, at the end of the day, you're all trying to, trying to help each other and get better because you know as a collective, if you, if you stop, look, and listen and want to help and take on criticism, you'll, it'll go a long way to making the team function a lot better. Um, he's a great kid, man. He's got a huge future. Mm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, did you enjoy that? Yeah. <laughs> Would you please give it up for Mr. James Lowe? Cheers. Thank you. Um, no, uh, James, you did mention that you would back yourself on painting, yeah, which uh, is great. And Prosecco. It's... There's no Prosecco <laughs> here, so painting might be a bit wayward. Well, it's time to put that to the test, my friends. Uh, as mentioned at the top of the show, <laughs> Um, all the recreationalists that are in tonight are very eager to get their hands on a pair of tickets to see New Zealand take on Ireland in the Guinness Series this weekend. Um, everybody's been uh, tweeting and Instagramming using the hashtag AnswerIrelandsCall. And with thanks to our friends at Guinness, we have two tickets to give away to the game. Uh, now, we've picked two people at random. Producer Pat, would you give me those names again? Okay, Aoife MacDonald, are you here? And if you are, let a big scream out, will you? She's actually right in front of us. Hi, hi, Eva. She knows. Put your hand up so we see in the wide shot. All right, say woo. She's there, hi, Eva. Yeah, get up for Eva. And and the other one, the other contestant, your other one is uh, Siobhan Carrigan. If you're here, would you make yourself no? She's Carrigan. Oh, she's actually... Are you with... Are you friends? <laughs> oh, you don't know each other. That's fine. All right, well, now you're sworn enemies, all right? So just... All right, well, it's very simple and straightforward. We've got Aoife and we've got Siobhan. So Aoife is at the front, Siobhan's at the back. All right. 
Um, so you guys can say where you are because we're going to be playing a game. It's not quite uh, Prosecco and paint. It's pints and paint. All right. So we've got our pints in yeah. front of us. Uh, and uh, don't worry. You guys don't need to know art because we have, as we know, not just James, but two regular Vincent van Goghs here to represent your interest tonight. So here we go, guys. Um, I got some pads here. James, you take that. Thank you. Um, of course, a paint and prosecco veteran, and uh, Trimby, under 15 North Derry uh, <laughs> schools art champion. That's, that's right, what I heard. Yeah, very wet behind the ears. Um, I'll get you some paints here. All right, that's for you. Sorry, Thank markers, you. and another marker. So, what about we go, Aoife? You're going to be represented, Team New Zealand, by James Lowe. All right, give it up for James and for Aoife. <laughs> Don't worry, James. You're New Zealand. You're New Zealand for the purpose of this competition, but we won't hold you to that, all right? Uh, yes, there you go. Yeah. And Siobhan, you're going to be represented by Team Ireland. It's Andrew Sorry. Trimble for Siobhan and Andrew. Give it up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do what I can, Siobhan, but I'm not promising anything. All right. Um, so here's what's going to happen, guys. We're going to put 60 seconds on the clock. So I've got my... My heart already... I already I've feel bad. My... Oh, yeah, yeah. No. So do I. So do I. Um, We'll see how it goes. I'm going to put 60 seconds on the clock. Guys, here's your, here's your challenge, because we are dealing with some very, very talented artists here. Can you please give us your best version of Joe Schmidt? All right? Mm. So anyone who's ever done art knows portrait. That's a hard place to begin, but not when you're dealing with artists at the level of James Lowe and Andrew Trimble. All right, so if you're ready to go, Aoife and Siobhan in three, two, one, start drawing. All right. James is starting off, he's drawing a, okay. He's gone straight for the face, the head. Andrew's drawing a cap, interesting. But let's give them a bit of support here. All right, come on. Come on, Trimby. Come on, James. Huge arms. James, Joe Smith. He's the Ireland team manager, that's it. That's looking pretty good. All right. All right, can we hear for Team New Zealand? For James over here. James and Aoife, all right. And for Team Ireland, we've got Trimby and Siobhan. Woo, woo, woo. All right, we've got 35 seconds. Remember, this is, this is for real. This is two tickets to see Ireland versus New Zealand. This is a money camp buy. Well, thanks to our buddies in Guinness. Uh, you're going to be right. one of you's been going to see this game at the weekend. All right, Trimby, are you? How are you feeling? It's not you, Siobhan. Not looking. Right. Trimby, Trimby's uh, using Manny I'm Mark. Trying. This is impressive. James is going. All right, let's go with five. Yeah. Five. Four, three, two, one. All right, time's up. All right, stop drawing. All right. <laughs> oh, it's just as wipey. All right. We got David Wallace, who stayed on. Thank you very much, David, to be our, our official judge. So, into the camera for the first one. This is uh, Siobhan and Trimby, Team Ireland. Do you want to you show it up there, yep. Trimby? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Uh... <laughs> It looks right, like Wally, any, any initial comments there? Uh, female right. Joe Smith. Like Josephine Smith. <laughs> Josephine Smith. <laughs> right up until the last second, he, he was <laughs> topless. <laughs> and then I just threw a jersey on, but he's, he's still... I think he's still only got one arm, but... Okay. Uh, you, know, you know what he's like. Okay, okay. I like uh, the long uh, arms as well, Trimby. <laughs> <you know? laughs> okay, James, do you want to uh, show us your creation? Yeah, Might be a little of bit of. I'm not sure if that was. No, we let him away. Yeah. All right, James, that's your creation. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, uh, <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> yeah. All right, Wally. Before before we ask you for your decision, I think you need some help from the audience. All right. Okay. So, yeah. if it's going to be Team Ireland and Siobhan, can I hear a big cheer now? Let's go. <laughs> If it's going to be Team New Zealand and Aoife and James, can I get a big cheer now? Uh, pretty clear, pretty clear. <laughs> that, All right, that Wally. Joe Schmidt, he is up for the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's bumped. Wally, uh, it's your call. Is it going to be Aoife and James or Siobhan and Trimby? What oh, are you going to I say? I want to get out of here alive, so I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go with James. James! <laughs> 
I'm sorry, Siobhan. Aoife, do you want to come up here? Well done. Do you want to come up on stage here? Uh, everybody give it up for Aoife. She's winning two tickets. Hang on, we'll have a look at this. Congrats. Have a seat. Hey, now you're fine. Do you want to take us home? Oh, yeah. 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 For, for Heartbreak, here, here you go. This is for you. Oh, thank you. So With thanks to the lads. At Guinness, you're going to see the Guinness series. Give it up one more time for James and for Aoife. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We've got, we got something nice for you as well, Siobhan, and we'll talk to you after the show. I don't know what it is. Producer Pat just said that into my ear. Jeez. Think, think. Get, sounds, her, get her sounds, something. Get sounds, her something. Uh, oh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a signed picture of Andrew Trimble, apparently. <laughs> Top, topless, though. Topless. <laughs> With two arms. <laughs> two arms. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is your lot for tonight. Thank you very much. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to be in your company here um, at the Guinness Open Gate. Rory, did you enjoy yourselves? A massive thanks to James Lowe, to Conrad Smith, to David Wallace, uh, to all the Joe production team, to Tana Umanga, um, and indeed our friends here at Guinness for hosting us and uh, for being such hospitable hosts as well. If you haven't subscribed, just go on, just press subscribe, and uh, if you're looking for it, if you can't find us, just um, go past like second captains and off the ball and keep scrolling towards the top of the chart. That's cheap. Sorry, that's really cheap. Anyway, everyone have a great night. Thanks a lot. Good luck.